try to explain how my Glock works. Okay, so we're going to show it's clear. This is the 9mm setup. <clears throat> the 9mm setup right now is really dirty because I probably ran like 200 rounds through it um, just a couple days ago. Didn't clean it yet. See, the lockup is no problem. Once you run a lot of ammo through it, the lockup is not going to be an issue. As you can see, there is uh, no rock forward. When I pull the trigger, my fucking reset is beautiful because it's got the tyrant designs. Driving a fucking goddamn Cessna airplane up the fucking road. Alright, so I'm at the wall from the reset. I have a Tyrant Designs um, ITTS forced reset trigger. As you can see, there's no hang up on the, on the return. It's locked up, no problem. I'm running the stock 15 pound spring that comes with the mass driver on the 9mm version. So we can see that my reset is beautiful. This is no longer a six pound Glock trigger. It is now a three and a half pound forced reset Tyrant Designs ITTS trigger. So I also put a, because I put a ghost three and a half pound trigger connector in there. So the whole trigger has been redone. The, the reset puts you right at the wall. Three and a half pounds, beautiful break um, for a Glock. <clears throat> Okay, now we're going to take it down and I'll show you. I'm going to take the slide off. Don't really need the frame right now. We're going to set that down. Okay. 15 pound spring. This is a Glock 22. Um, a lot of people complain about how hard it is to take apart and put together and all that noise. Honestly, it's not hard at all for somebody who's done it more than once. So you take the screw off of the mass driver, you take the mass driver off. Okay, there's your spring inside, Pfft, your mass driver. Because this mass driver isn't just a compensator, it acts as a counterweight. It springs forward when, you, when the gas goes through and ports out the top. This will spring forward, create a counterweight for the gun, which also reduces your recoil. It works in two different ways. People don't really understand that. I'm going to set that aside. Now you have your extended guide rod, which fits the mass driver. And um, this is a Gen 4 frame. Glock 22 Generation 4. This is a Glock 22 Gen 3 slide. Take my guide rod out. Okay. Mass driver guide rod, 15 pound spring, 9 millimeter. Now the reason I can run a Gen 3 slide on a Gen 4 frame, pardon the dirt, is this piece right here. Fills the gap that is created between the difference of the Gen 4 recoil springs and the Gen 3 recoil springs. So when you do this conversion, you will have to run Generation 3 springs. Oh, and I also run um, Tribe Defense Barrel, which is amazingly accurate and very consistent and smooth. It's uh, very reliable. It's really dirty because I ran it, but I haven't gotten around to cleaning it yet. So, <clears throat> there you have everything, and everybody complains about how hard it is to install the mass driver. I'm going to show you how easy it is, but when you put the, the guide rod in, make sure those two ears are facing down. That's a mistake that a lot of people make, is they put the guide rod in upside down. Make sure it's right side up. Okay, so we're just going to throw the barrel in. Um, the guide rod that everybody, whoop, we got to put the adapter plate on. Put the adapter plate 
for our Gen 3 slide to Gen 4 frame with the mass driver rectangle hole. Get that lined up, push that in. There's the 15 pound spring. Make sure that the round top without the notches is on top. And the, the side with the notches is the side that interfaces with your barrel lug. Okay, so that's on. I'm gonna throw the mass driver back on. Okay, we're gonna brace it, hold everything, and just give it a snug quarter turn. And it's all set and ready to go. Nine millimeter. And these are my nine millimeter magazines. And now I'm ready to go to town, nine millimeter. Okay. Take that back off. Okay. And now what we're gonna do is I did the same thing with the 40 Smith and Wesson, but the 40 Smith and Wesson slide. I'm running a 19 pound spring. Okay. And that's pretty much what you need to know. Everything goes together the same way as the 9mm. If you really want me to take it apart and do it, I will. It doesn't take no time at all. Whoop. Okay. Spring is still in there, we're good. We take that off. 19 pound spring. As you can see, my spring did not warp, it did not compress. It is no problem. So, a few of you out there that are experiencing problems with you compressing the 18 pound springs and it not having perfect lockup, I don't. You're, a lot of you are running a Glock 23. You have to keep in mind, I'm running a Glock 22, it's a little bit longer slide. Um, it's the duty size Glock. Again, in the 40 Smith & Wesson, we have the mass driver adapter plate. You can get the regular adapter plate, which is round for regular guide rods, which I have two of those, and so I can run them without the mass drivers. And then, and then I have two of these, which are actually made by Strike Industries for the mass driver. And they are literally made for the Gen 3 slide to the Gen 4 frame. You can find everything I'm talking about on eBay. Buy yourself a big bag of springs from ranging from like 17 pounds or 15 pounds all the way to 22 pounds and you will find a spring that will give you perfect ejection pattern and um, it will give you the right feel. Cycling will be perfect and you'll be a happy camper. Lock up. Your lock up will be perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back together. Again, make sure that your guide rod goes in the right way with the notches facing down. Interface with your barrel lug. Got a 19 pound spring so it's a little bit tighter than the 15 pound spring. But as you can see it went in no problem. We'll throw the mass driver back on. Get that thing singed down after I toss a few wrenches all over the deck. Okay. Brace it. Give it another squeeze. Looks like that's as far as it's going to go. And the reason I built two different slides for this is because the 40 Smith & Wesson um, extractor Using that for 9mm doesn't really, I don't know, it doesn't give you the ejection pattern that you should have. It, it's not. So I built two different slides because I wanted this one to be dedicated for 40 Smith & Wesson. And I wanted the 9mm one dedicated for 9mm. And the reason that this one, <clears throat> the 9mm one, has perfect ejection pattern is not only did I tune the spring that came with the, the recoil spring, but... Also, I used a Shadow Systems um, enhanced 9mm extractor. I'm not going to use a 9mm extractor for 40 Smith & Wesson. So I got two different dedicated slides.
Now it's in 40 Smith & Wesson. 40 Smith & Wesson magazines are here. And now I'm ready to go 40 Smith & Wesson. Okay. Um, as you can see, you guys wanted to see the lockup. Lockup is perfect. Um, on the return. Beautiful trigger. Um, I do recommend the Tyrant Designs Forced Reset ITTS trigger. It's quite nice. I mean, uh, it's why I can get so accurate with this gun. So there's that. I'm actually going to leave it in 40 Smith & Wesson. Okay. And then this would be my original slide, the Glock 22 slide that came with it. And this is Generation 4, so there is one more caliber that I can convert this gun to, which is 357 SIG. So what I plan on doing is I'm going to send this factory OEM slide out to the North Carolina engravers, <clears throat> and I'm going to have them cut it and Cerakote it, make it pretty, and build this slide for 357 SIG, which will take pretty much all of the same parts that the 40 Smith & Wesson takes. But me being me, I will have to buy another mass driver for it. I'll have to buy the Generation 4 mass driver for it. And this will, this one, the 357 SIG version will run. Um, I can do either or. I can run Gen 3 guide rods and springs or I can run Gen 4 guide rods and springs. Just because of Strike Industries makes those interface plates that are, that make, make everything worthwhile. You know what I mean? And obviously there's my 22 slide and the 22 magazines next to that. Ran that last night, had a great time with it. And I just wanted to explain to you how my Glock works and after you tune it, the springs will, they should not compress. Your springs should not compress. So, I mean, I don't know why you guys are having problems with your springs compressing on the Glock 23s, but keep in mind, this is a Glock 22. This is not a Glock 23. But all in all, it should be pretty much the same idea. They should make even more for the Glock 23 because it's, <clears throat> it's more popular than the Glock 22 as far as concealed carry purposes, range purposes, too. Well, I wish you guys the best. I hope everything works out for you. Um, the two slides that I've built for this, 40 and 9mm, both of them I have tuned. They run flawlessly. Every once in a while I'll have a magazine failure. But And one thing I do want to point out is when you're running regular Glock magazines, Um, having a fucking billet aluminum mag release that interfaces with that right there which is just polymer and I've ruined a lot of magazines because I have a metal mag release and plastic magazines so what it does is it chews up that part right there so then <laughs> What happens is while you're shooting, boom, 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 the fucking mag falls out after each shot or every other shot, <laughs> and it makes you look stupid. So make sure your magazines are in good shape if you have a extended mag release that is made out of aluminum or metal or whatever material that could be harder than your magazine's material, because it will strip that lip right off your magazine, and then when you're shooting, your magazine will fall out experienced that too many times. I'm looking for metal magazines for Glocks and I see uh, MBX makes some metal magazines for Glocks but the only problem is is I'm I need them in 10 rounds because I'm in a 10 round state. <clears throat> I can't have more than 10 rounds in my magazines so every magazine you see here yeah it's a 10 round magazine unfortunately that's what we got to play with. But other than that there's the build. I hope everybody enjoyed it. Um, I hope I answered some questions. You know, as as you sh as this thing operates and while it's shooting, um, 
when the slide goes back, the compensator springs forward as a counterweight. So to make everything weighted perfectly, it's a nine millimeter magazine. To make everything weighted perfectly, I added Strike Industries um, base plates, plus zero base plates that are weighted. They have a little metal weight in them. So not only do they drop out nice, but they also balance the gun out. Got the light on the front, the compensator on the front. You need a little bit of weight. So a full magazine of 10 rounds with the extra uh, weighted Strike Industries base plate makes the gun very balanced. Now, if I was to take, run it without the light, might not need those um, weighted magazines, but I like my gun to be well balanced. And as you can see, it's well balanced, right, right at the trigger guard. And that's, it's actually balanced right here if, uh, if it's a full magazine. So we'll do a full magazine. I just won't rack it. Do we have a full magazine? Magazine. 10 rounds. So as you can see, right in that area here is where it balances. So and that's where your, your support hand goes and everything is very, very nice. Feels really good. Very balanced. That's another thing when you're tuning a race gun, uh, good balance is going to give you flatter shooting too. So you got the mechanical spring forward you have the um, escaping gases going up you have the slide coming back and you have weighted magazines weighted flashlight everything together is why this thing shoots so flat this is a live free armory slide <clears throat> um, and this one i believe is a tack fire slide so both slides work really great Plus, you know, you just can't be shy. You got to take them out and you got to run a lot of ammunition through them. So be prepared once you get your springs so they're not compressing and you get everything so it's running right. Um, the ejection pattern is a big thing. So when I'm shooting either gun, the ejection pattern is all of the shells are in one pile. It's all the casings. They're in. They're usually within um, like a three square foot area, and that's what you're looking for. And you want them about where I like them to land is about between two and three o'clock, about five feet away from my feet. That's where I tune my ejection pattern. Um, and you tune your ejection pattern with your recoil springs and your ammunition. If you make your own ammunition, this is going to be a whole lot easier for you. Because when I broke this, these guns in, these slides, um, I honestly used my own home loads, my own reloads, which are, you know, 124 grain um, full metal jackets. And what I use for powder is long shot. I'm not going to give you the actual charge because I don't know if you can do that on YouTube. But Long shot creates a really nice recoil response, really good cycling, and when you run hot ammunition through, especially like 200 rounds through your new Glock build, it's going to break it in fast. Now I will also mention that in the 9mm, um, I did some gunsmithing to this one just for, you know, just for fun, because when it had the stock trigger in it, um, it was a little gritty and spongy and one way to clean up that grit and sponge was I, uh, I polished the actual safety plunger and it made it beautiful and polished the bottom of the trigger bar where it intersects with the, where it actually scrapes over the top of the safety plunger <clears throat> when you pull the trigger. So that's how you fix your take up. Like if you have a spongy gritty take up you can just polish your safety plunger and polish your trigger bar where it actually intersects with the safety plunger and slides over the top of it as it as you're pulling the trigger and you can really clean your trigger up um, I'm definitely gonna keep this trigger um, 
I've grown real used to it. I'm a really good shot with it and so steady that, you know, consistently hit 100 yard silhouettes and with a, with a fucking Glock. So, no complaints there. The Magwell is also made by Tyrant Designs. And I'll tell you what, I really love these um, sights made by Cross Armory. They are beautiful, highly visible, and true co-witness with the red dot. That's one thing I like, is I like true co-witness. So on all of my builds, I do suppressor height sights, which gives me true co-witnessing. That way, if my dot ever does decide to die, or not turn on when I need it, I still have sights. Alright, thanks for watching. I hope I answered some questions. I'll play with different springs. If it's a 40, you're going to probably end up with a 19 or a 20 pound spring. If it's a 9 millimeter, you're probably going to end up with either the 15 pound spring that comes with the mass driver, or you're going to end up with probably, you can go lower. I also bought mass driver, uh, Strike Industry springs for the mass driver, and they come in 11 pounds, 13 pounds, and 15 pounds. So I bought an 11 pound spring and a 13 pound spring because the 15 comes with it. And I'm going to tell you right now, the 13 and the 11 do not use for 40 Smith & Wesson. They're way too weak. And they are also what I believe to be a little too weak for 9mm. So 15 pounds, if you have good stout ammunition, which factory ammunition is usually built pretty decent. I'm not going to lie. Factory ammo is comparable to my reloads. Um, you should be cycling no problem. You should have lockup no problem as long as you tune it. If the, if the 18 pound springs are not working in your Glock 23s, try a 19 pound spring. If it's not, if you're not getting good lockup, see I didn't let it slam forward either. I kind of grazed it forward so it was like picking up a bullet. Now that's complete lockup. There is no, there is no movement. It is locked up on the reloads. Let it go back slow, so it's kind of like picking up a round. Got my reset. There's no rock. There is no problems with lockup. It locks up perfect. And it's the same thing with the 9mm. The lockup is crisp. Now, when I first started running these slides, yeah, they were brand new. They needed to be broken in. All the parts need to work, you know, in unison with each other. And the only way to do that is to run a whole bunch of ammunition through it, smooth all the surfaces out in there, and then it just runs like a top. So both my slides in my Glock, they both are, I would say, they're as reliable as a factory Glock, which is pretty amazing because factory Glocks are really reliable. Not saying that there's never a malfunction, but I would trust it with my life. So my next venture is to send out my original Gen 4 slide, probably to NC Engravers, because, hey, let's face it, they do the best work, I think, out of uh, anybody I've seen. And I'll get it cut for an RMR. I will get suppressor height sights on it. Probably put a Siley Wolf X Pro on it. Um, not sure what I'm going to do for a barrel. Should I stay with gold or should I go with a different color for the 357 SIG? I remember my frame has some gold on it, so there's that. I'll probably get some cuts, some windows, slide cuts. I haven't decided what kind yet. And definitely some new serrations, because Glock serrations and the Gen 4s, they don't have front serrations. It's like grabbing onto a fucking slippery hot dog and here we go yeah that'll be the next thing I do so the Glock is not done yet um, once I convert this slide to 357 sig and dedicate it to 357 sig um, that's it it'll shoot four calibers and I'll be done and there won't be anything else I can really do with it so Except for maybe send the frame out and maybe have the frame stippled, but I'm not really big on sending my frames through the mail. So, especially when they're considered the firearm with the serial number. The SIG was easy. You take the fire control unit out, 
that's considered the firearm and you can send the modular frame and you can send the slide and they did both for me and it came out beautiful no complaints big thank you to nc engravers for working on my sig p320 and 45 acp and i hope i answered all the questions that you guys have about your strike industries mass driver on your glock 40 smith and wesson or nine millimeter either one it'll work for all of them so don't let the warning signs deter you from trying it in your 40. It works better than it does in the 9mm. It actually works like it's really supposed to. Full mechanic motion of the mass driver and <clears throat> very minimal recoil. And yes, it does work really well with the 9mm, but you'll, have, you'll see in slow motion a few rounds won't send that mechanical thing forward. Every time with the 40, sends it forward. It's got plenty of pressure. And... Strike Industries, I don't even know if they know how <laughs> how nice their mass driver really is once it's tuned. It's, uh, yeah, okay, it's bulky. It takes up a little bit more space than, like, the ones that are slide, you know. But, I mean, you got to admit, even the gases that are coming back into the slide are coming out of my slide ports. So, there's another way to escape gases without them creating recoil. Okay.